नमस्कार डियर फ्रेंड्स इन अवर लास्ट वीडियो वी एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अर्थक्वेक लाइक वट अर्थक्वेक इज नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी वुड बी एक्सप्लेनिंग इन डेप्थ अबाउट वट हैपन्स वेन अर्थक्वेक हिट दी स्ट्रक्चर सो इफ यू हैव नॉट गेट सीन अवर अर्लियर वीडियो प्लीज गो थ्रू दैट सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस वीडियो इन अ बेटर वे सो मिस्टर मानिक चैटर्जी वुड एक्सप्लेन वट इज हैपनिंग वेन अर्थक्वेक हिट्स सो प्लीज वेलकम ओके वेलकम टू दिस presentation now basics of seismic design in this particular thing we wanted to explain that uh, in the seismic analysis or seismic design we have to deal with inelastic cyclic cyclic uh, deformations as compared to other type of forces that we deal in the civil engineering uh, issues this have, one has to keep in mind we are we are never designing our structures in elastic zone though we design it but it is meant to perform in 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 elastic zone also now as the ground moves the building moves so we will get a better picture in the next slide of uh, how this thing is moving but well, let us look at it that down deep below there is an earthquake takes place which is shown as earthquake you know that body wave moves goes through the rock then in wherever there are soil it goes through the soil and then comes to the surface and then converts into a surface wave there will be reflection refraction and so many things i'm not going into that and once the surface waves come and hit the structure as you can see the bottom of the structure or the foundation along with the bottom uh, structure bottom of bottom part of the structure is moved along with the wave however the top part is not having any forces applied to it and hence it has to move according to how the bottom part is behaving now this becomes a dynamic response of the structure the deflected shape so your mic is off a uh, deflected shape of building due to dynamic effect is shown in this particular thing so it basically what the structure experiences is inherently because of its own property in the wave function next uh just to understand how it is different from uh wind forces Uh, one can go through the whatever i have written it the wind is actually a semi static force applied on the surface of the structure there will be in high wind cases there will be some amount of uh, vibration will be there but it is an applied force it is not a force generated because of some movement of the part and whatever deflection or vibration takes place it is because of the direct application on the surface and that is why the analysis of wind forces are entirely different as compared to the earthquake analysis next while we study many literatures of earthquake we come across many terms so just briefly i'll go through it so when there is a sudden disturbance in rock wave spread out through the earth the maximum effect is felt near its source diminishing with the distance from the source as we go away from the source it will be diminishing 
so vibration felt in the bedrocks are called shocks there are many terms like that we will hear shocks some earthquakes are preceded by smaller four shocks and larger earthquakes are normally followed by after aftershocks so as uh, mr avandeep was saying that delhi area is uh, facing a lot of small earthquakes two richter scale three richter scale maybe sometimes four these can be also a kind of four shocks a sort of warning the four shocks are usually interpreted as being caused by the plastic deformation or small ruptures you know it it clearly shows that uh, the rock structure below and nearby the delhi area is undergoing deformations uh and it's a smaller deformations and therefore small ruptures are taking place after shocks are usually due to the fresh ruptures or readjustment of the fractured rock the rock gets fractured then it slips and we get a major shock the main earthquake then again the forces get realigned there will be a slight adjustment again in the uh, rock below and those slight adjustments uh, that take place are called aftershocks sometimes aftershocks can be as big as the main shock itself the point of generation of earthquake is known as focus or hypocenter and the point directly above that focus or epicenter is a uh, uh, is a focus or a hypocenter is called epicenter the distance from the epicenter to any other point outside is called epicentral distance next please next please hello it is seismic waves sir ah okay see straight last train energy is released during an earthquake travel uh which i have already said there will be reflections or refractions that take place and this is about i'm just trying to tell you what are the type of waves that uh, hit our uh, uh, the earth and the surface so one of the main uh, seismic wave that is called body wave which is also called p wave or primary longitudinal or compression waves you know this is this goes along in straight line right towards the surface or towards some many other direction it, it's it's a, it moves radially from the point of origin and this is in compression it's a huge compression that takes place and that this one causes the vertical uh, vibration in the structures when it uh, hits any structure at the surface then there are s waves which are also called secondary waves or transverse wave or shear waves resulting from the interaction between body waves and the surface layer of the earth so it's a bit uh, very highly complex and uh, complicated uh, phenomena let us right now understand that there will be a secondary wave or a transverse wave moving along with the compression wave that is p wave then there are waves which travel along the surface only which are again uh, originated due to certain complex phenomena so these are called surface waves and these are called l wave or love wave love is uh, the name of the scientist who discovered it and another is rayleigh wave or r wave and they have one is a ripple type another one is a shear movement lateral movement uh, seismic effects are caused predominantly by surface waves next please it's just a pictorial one uh, the first uh, picture on the top shows the compression uh, that is p wave how it body wave or p wave which travels as a compression and relaxation compression relaxation then there are after reaching the uh, 
uh, surface wave you can see how it becomes undulated then there are uh, love wave which if uh, it is a bit uh, difficult from understanding it is a lateral movement type uh, on the surface it moves along the surface in a lateral movement and uh, down below Rayleigh wave is a ripple like you know if you drop a stone on the uh, on a water pond and then you see a ripple so that is a ripple undisturbed medium next please the problem is unless we quantify these uh, uh, wave in terms of uh, forces uh, then uh, then only we can analyze it we can prepare a mathematical model and uh, analyze it so we need to measure the earthquake effects now long back when there were not many instruments were there the uh, sophisticated equipment digital or analog were not available so what happened is uh, by after the earthquake has occurred and damages have taken place some experts used to go and categorize those uh, earthquake effects through visual inspection of the damages of the structures and these earthquakes were categorized or classified in terms of earthquake intensity normally there are two popular methods of uh, classification by observation of the effects of damages one of them is called modified mercury intensity mmi and the other is medve medvedev spoon here i don't know how to pronounce it karnik msk64 intensity scale that MSK 64 intensity scale is uh, being used in India and it is also used in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, <coughs> MSK scale has a little advantage or little elaborate over MMI scale but nevertheless they are one and the same thing, not much of a difference. Now once the structural engineers are concerned with the effect of the ground motion on the structure that is the forces that is actually getting transferred to the structure under various things you know these uh, classifications are not good enough the effect what we need is what is the force that we should apply to the structure so that we can design it so next uh, uh, subsequent slides will show how this uh, msk scale or mmi scales are finally connected to the ground acceleration that's what we want to have in order to calculate the force next please see this is earthquake intensity scale and magnitude of earth as terms of richter scale on the right side you can see and the left side of the table you have mer uh, intensity scales one two three four five six seven eight nine up to twelve and the Merkley that is uh, descriptive part is shown like feeble slight moderate strong very strong and the effect is shown in the written form and the corresponding Richter scale in a range is given this is how we are coming closer to quantifying in terms of forces this is first step up to Richter scale let's go next because Richter scale is also deflection measurement scale then we have a broad classification of many literatures refer to these uh, uh, earthquakes or magnitudes like uh, great uh, earthquake is magnitude greater by eight major seven to seven point nine like that there is classification that i have given the classification based on the earthquake effect is also as per the effect is also given magnitude on the top below we have shown by visual uh, description 
usually not felt, often felt, slightly damaged to structure, many cause of lot, many, many cause lot of damages in the population area, 6.1, 6.9, often felt but may not cause, may cause only minor damages, uh, 5.5 to 6. These are the magnitudes we are talking of. Now, this is to be connected finally to the peak ground acceleration where there's a bottom chart, a bottom table shows like PGA. PGA stands for peak ground acceleration in terms of G. G is uh, gravity, uh, gravity acceleration. And MMI scaling is there, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can see uh, uh, PGA 0 0.03, 0 0.04 is for five, uh, scale six, 0 0.06 to 0 0.07, scale seven, and scale eight, scale nine, so on, so forth. Next, please. Now, after having done that, what our code has done, it has divided the uh, entire map, uh, entire uh, uh, India into various zones, which uh, Mr. Amandeep was showing you in the uh, 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 earlier map. There were zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. And those are called zone factors. These zone factors are basically uh, a reasonable estimate of effective peak ground acceleration. This is this provides us the basic input for uh, calculating the main force that the structure may experience. Thank you, Manik sir. Now, as we learned from this video, that the earthquake forces are dependent on peak ground acceleration and how the waves travel and how it affects the structure. So I hope all of you would have enjoyed this video. Please like this video and subscribe our YouTube channel so that we continue to provide you the uh, useful videos of your choice. Thank you.